Nearly three decades ago, forest ecologist Dr. Susan Simmer discovered that trees communicate their needs, share water, and even send distress signals about drought or disease via underground networks buried in the soil. Dr. Simmel called this network the Wood Wide Web. Some call it talking trees. If you've grown up climbing trees like me, that shouldn't be a surprise for you. I've always known that trees talk. Let me give you a secret. They can also see, hear, and smell. So, you know what it means, right? They know what's going on on Earth. They feel the pain of it, and they even comprehend who to blame. Did I say who to blame? Blame. Such a humanistic expression that no talking tree would ever use. No, 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 no. Trees don't blame anyone, and Mother Nature never judges. Mother Nature only tries to survive and heal itself. After all, forest restoration is among our best climate change solutions available today. See, no matter what we do, no matter how selfish we are, nature helps us to have a chance. That's why I thought a forest would be the best place for my talk. <laughs> a forest is like open arms ready to embrace you without judging, to give power and support. It feels safe to be among trees. Fewer thoughts come to your mind and the hustle and bustle in your head quiet down. It's easy to distinguish between what is important and what is not. Let me tell you what is important. People like you. While climate change is one of the greatest threats facing our planet, because of people like you who care about our planet are standing together to take action on climate change, there is still hope. This is what I would like to talk about today, having hope. Hope, by the way, is not optimism. One of the differences between hope and optimism, says Matthew Gallagher, a well-known psychologist, optimism is a more general expectation that good things are going to happen, even if you don't know how they will happen. Hope, meanwhile, has positive expectations about the future, but is driven by our capacity to identify goals and set strategies to achieve them, he says. There is little reason to be optimistic about climate change. Hope, on the other hand, is what we need to be able to act. But on an issue like climate change, we cannot hope people will immediately act only because they have become more concerned. As a concept, climate change is widely known and accepted in the public mind. However, we need to understand that there is a gap between having environmental concerns and displaying behavior according to those concerns. Most of the time, we are under the impression that increasing people's understanding awareness or even fear are necessary to change their behavior. No, 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 it's not, it's not. This is the common wisdom from the early 1970s and proven to be wrong long time ago. Awareness about a global issue do not necessarily lead to change in behavior. Rather, it can lead to anxiety, apathy, even denial. Yet, today, most of the environmental groups, works, campaigns, activities, still base their strategies on the assumption that more knowledge will lead to more enlightened behavior. This is surprising to me, because common sense tells us that changing behavior is extremely difficult. Anyone who has ever tried to change a habit, even in a very minor way, knows how difficult it is, even if the new behavior has distinct advantages over the old one. So, if increasing awareness and establishing concerns about climate change don't motivate people to seek ways to minimize the negative impact of their actions, then what can be done instead? 
Here is what I think. The great challenges about climate change is people often feel untouched by it. Climate change is often conceptualized as a threat we should be concerned about rather than as something we know how to act on. Calling for urgent action does little to help people figure out how to respond concretely. It only causes them feel overwhelmed and disconnected. This is where art can make a difference. Art does not tell people what to do. It touches people's heart, gives hope, inspires to act. As an actor and performer, let me try to tell you how art can do that. Most of you Yes, most of you know the feeling of being touched by a work of art, a song, a play, a movie, a poem, a novel, a painting, even a character. When you are touched by an art piece, you are moved. When I say moved, I mean uh, you become aware of a feeling that may not be unfamiliar to you, but you don't focus for any kind of reasons. We call it a transformative experience. And once you are exposed to such a transformative experience, it alters your perception about life, yourself and others. As a result, you can't avoid to take action. This is why art is so powerful. It can change the world because it can change people and the way they see the world. As an actor who is continuously seeking to create this transformational experience on stage and screen over 25 years, I've witnessed that on several occasions. The pursuit of a fictional character can promote uh, a critical re-evaluation of previously held beliefs. A movie can change the way you perceive life as you once knew it. A play can evoke emotions of tolerance and empathy. I therefore believe that accelerating action on climate change requires an alternative approach. Rather than providing information, facts, consequences to increase understanding, we need to use the power of stories. A focus on storytelling doesn't make science obsolete. On the contrary, Storytelling can be a powerful tool for science. While telling stories through art pieces, we also need to keep in mind that humans are more likely to change behavior when challenges are framed positively instead of negatively. In other words, how we develop stories influences how people respond. First of all, people are more likely to act in relation to a positive story versus a negative statement. Secondly, good stories are about people, not issues. That's why we have to provide a wide variety of stories of people taking positive action on climate change. Our focus should be on presenting people opportunities for action, and we need to avoid fact-based dullness. Instead of telling them what to do, our stories need to support them in discovering how to act. Once people act and even slightly feel they are a part of a greater purpose, they will want for more. This is a critical point too. While knowledge do not change our actions, actions change our beliefs. In real life, Human beings do not act according to what they believe in. They prefer to believe how they act is true. We call it self-persuasion. The relationship between belief and behavior often goes in the opposite direction. Our actions change our beliefs, and most of the time, we only copy the actions of others. And as one action leads to another, we go through a process of self-persuasion, which results in knowing how to act. This means we need to provide stories of people taking positive action on climate change so that others can copy them. On top of that, making climate action a part of people's professional lives and work routines 
is extremely important too. Once the industry they are in makes significant changes in the way it does business with, self persuasion process will start for each individual. Once they are pushed to act in a different manner, what they believe will will be also be, will be also be shaped accordingly. Since uh, groups of people who have a shared expertise and passion are better at learning from each other, communities of practice can expand the notions of climate action. Let me give you a very recent example. Three months ago, Ikaseve, the Cultural Foundation, delivered me the report titled Arts and Culture for Ecological Transformation, which invites the world of arts and culture to work on solutions on ecological crisis. Even though I have significant concerns about the ecological crisis, when I read the report, which provides stories about new approaches and practices in the field of arts and culture in Netherlands and England, I realized, as an industry, we, we have a massive, a massive potential to initiate climate action, but not leveraged enough in this fight. That's how I decided to come up with a podcast series called Earthlings, Can Art Heal the Planet? In this podcast series, we invited change makers who put significant effort to make ecological transformation in arts and culture in our country. We discussed how we can take concrete steps in our own industry. We talked about if art can influence the way people think and act as individuals and as a society. The more, talk we, the, the more we talked about it, the more we discovered the tremendous power we have to change cultural norms on climate change. We discovered that storytellers and content creators are key communities of practice, which have a pivotal role to play in helping society to shift to an action-based conceptualization of climate change. I believe that one of the major responsibilities of creative community is to create change in the world. We have to search for new ideas and find unorthodox ways of approaching contemporary issues. But it has to be a collaborative effort. So for anyone who feels hopeless about climate change, Get in touch with people who are actively involved in doing things. They will help you to hold on to hope. Some may say you're a dreamer, but you're not the only one.